The Yamaha TX802 came out in 1987 as a successor to the DX7, but today it seems forgotten. No one mentions using the TX802 in emails that I received, so I thought I should do a review of it. This is what was used to create the off the matrix banks for the DX7. It's essentially a DX7 II in a rack, but it has the advantages over the keyboard models by being eight part multi-timbral with eight individual outputs. I'm surprised that Vintage Synth Explorer claims that it has a limited interface making editing next to impossible. So I'll show how easy it is to use. Um, the first thing you have to get used to is you're always in performance mood. Um, and this, at this point, um, when I was playing this demo song, the pad is taking up the first part here of using, it has eight two voice modules. So it's the first part is using eight notes of polyphony. For the second part starts on five is this is a two-part module. So then this is using four voices, but then this is using the other four voices of the total 16 voices. So when you wanna change a voice, you go into voice select. And then at this point, you can change the pad that I'm using here. Let's go up and down. Like this is a different pad. So that's the first thing you have to get used to. So if you want to change this and you select over here, then that changes the voice. So if you want to get rid of a voice, you do this. As now this is actually using 12 voices and the last four to this. So now I'll go back into here. And you go into performance edit. And then you can select a receive channel. Then you go into volume and you select the volumes for each part. Outputs. Now what's nice about this, you can select, it has two um, outputs for the stereo. And usually what I do is for part one, I have a pad and I use more reverb to that channel. And then the second output, if it's gonna be, say, playing a bass, I make that more dry. The uh, TX802 seems to have some of the most realistic patches that I've heard from a Yamaha synth. Um, I think they spent a little more time trying to get some kind of realism out of the patches. So at this point, I'll show you how to edit a sound. What I did notice though is, is the patches of the output seemed to be set too high that, that it would sound better if you lowered the tone because it's almost like a distorted quality. But as far as the realism, I can show you, this is how you edit the sounds is through this section, you can see operator on and off. So by selecting a number of their six operators, you press three and it turns off Actually, you have to press enter in three. And then that turns off the stack of operators for the second um, tower. So now you only see here operators one and two. And it has like this nice thump quality. The patch is called Guitar Box. And if you let it go quickly, it's got a squeak in the sound even. But the problem is, is that the main body of the tone didn't sound realistic. They got, the, you know, the quality of the, the sounds, sounds good for the, the note off. Now I've selected the Off The Matrix Old Roads patch. And I'll show you how to layer it with a pad. So I'll just select another voice here.
Now I got it layered with a pad. But the pad's too bright, so I can go into voice edit and then check the algorithm. So I know which operators I need to lower the um, to make it softer. And this is using what's nice, this has got this little pull-out sheet that shows you the different configurations of the algorithms. So I need to change the output level of operator two to make it softer. So I go into operator, oscillator actually, and then push in one changes the operators. So I'll go into level here, and I'm gonna lower this a bit. I'm just typing a number around something like 60, I think. Yeah, I think that's better. But then also I'll lower six. Bring that down a little. Yeah, now I think that the pad's a little too loud, so I can just go in here into performance edit and lower the volume for the pad. Yeah, so, you know, it's not that difficult to use. I did notice, however, that the DX7 had one advantage over this TX802 in the fact that I figured out I was able to delay the um, carriers. So you could have a sound where you would want one tone to start before the other. Um, and I tried to do it with this pizzicato sound patch by setting, and I discovered what worked on the DX7, is I would set the level for zero and then have this sound come in on full level at the second stage. And that would create, create a delay. But when I transferred the patch from the DX7 over to the TX802, it didn't delay the sound. Um, and it's really a minor thing, but some pads that I created on the SY99 would be great if I could have a second oscillator delay of a fraction of a second. Um, but this is how it sounds on the SY99. You can hear that little... And it really works well for layering with samples. If you are looking for a synth that can use DX7 patches, and if you don't need a keyboard, this is what I would recommend. Because you won't lose money by buying vintage. I uh, got this TX802 over 20 years ago for only $200. Um, but today, I see on the market, they sell for around $600. And they're very reliable. The Yamaha's keyboards, I've never had problems with them. Which is not the case with Roland. But there is some other FM synths, like Korg's new Volca FM. But it's really limited what it can do because it only has six voices of polyphony. And the original model only had three voices. When I tried to do a demo mix with my TX81Z, I found its eight voices to be limited. So only having six or three voices would be, just be really <laughs> awful. There's also a Pocket Piano 201, but I believe it only uses Algorithm 4 for its patches, and I don't know why a company would design a synth like that. So altogether, I think this is the best investment. I'm always making improvements to the patches, so be sure to subscribe.